So I'll call the uh, meeting, planning and zoning commission meeting to, to order. First item. Michael Payne. Here. Sue Southern. Here. Steve Hulichek. Here. Kevin Fripon. Here. Okay, so I have uh, Kevin set for now. And I have uh, Mike sit, uh, back to secretary. Okay, so I, uh, I don't know if you wanted to say anything about <laughs> about our sonic problem. Nope, just um, encouraging all of you to speak directly into the microphone. Anyone who speaks to the commission, speak into the microphone. Go ahead and pull it off if you need to, but hold it up. First item on business is uh, public hearing ACH 23001, try to square. Mike, will you read me? Yeah. Notice it notice is hereby given that the following public hearing will be held on Tuesday, September 12, 2023 at 7 p.m. in community room two, Town Hall Annex 134, Groton Long Point Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following. ZCH 23-0001555 Sealy School Drive, Groton Pin 16891564169. CR Zone and Water Resource Protection District Overlay Zone. Proposal is to modify the boundary of the WRPD Overlay Zone. Review is per section 6.4-3D uh, and 9.3 of the zoning regulations. Triton Square Owner LLC Applicant. A Zoom meeting link will be posted on the town's website meeting count meetings calendar. Uh, applications are on file and available for public inspection during normous business hours at the Planning Department, 134 Groton One Point Road, Groton, Connecticut, 06340, and at the Office of the Town Clerk, 45 Fort Hill Road, Groton, Connecticut. The proposed draft zoning regulations can also be viewed at uh, www.grottonct.gov departments forward slash plan plan dev forward slash pan ding apps php all persons having interest in the application are invited to intend comment and provide testimony and evidence dated this first day of september 2023 at groton connecticut jeffrey pritchard chairperson is that okay yeah. I'll read yes yep. um, yeah. um, some of those things get mm -hmm. really just to briefly review, uh, I will handle the public hearing, the applicant and his presentation. Staff will provide any comments. We'll open it up to the public for any comments to the subject of the public hearing and then to the commissioners. And then if there are any questions that still have to be answered, we'll repeat the cycle. And, you cannot receive any comments after the meeting is closed. So any piece of information that is necessary to um, make a decision by the commission on the, on the application has to be brought forth during the public hearing. So I'll we'll turn it over to the applicant. Can you stand up at the podium and state your name and do you work for your address? Take this out. Yes, you can take it. Uh, good evening. My name is Anthony DeJoya um, with the uh, owner Trite Square Owner LLC. Um, what you guys have in front of you tonight is a small modification to the Water Resource Protection Division line. Um, when we started the site, Topos out there, we noticed that the map is incorrectly plotted. So we're seeking to move about a half of an acre um, out of that and correct the, the incorrect map in the corner there. So this is uh, Rock Ement from SLR Consulting, our engineer. And he uh, will walk you through and answer any questions you might have. Beautiful. Just for the record, uh, Rock Emmond, Associate Civil Engineer with SLR International Corporation out of Cheshire, Connecticut, 99 Realty Drive. Uh, here on behalf of the applicant, um, how does the uh, overhead rejector work? 
Just place it right in front of here. Lay it out on the table, facing facing the facing commission. The commission. Yep. Excellent. And we are going to just zoom in on it. Yep. So. <laughs> so you don't bump in your way. Oh, there we go. There she is. And what I'll do is I'll sort of stand here and go through this real, real quick. So uh, the current transfer project, which you know as the um, the, school, the Sealy School Drive area is 13.7 acres of total area. Um, this is the CR zone. Uh, as mentioned in the, um, the legal notice, there's also the portion of the property that is the WRPD zone which is located in the, uh, I think this is northwestern corner of the property. Um, essentially what's going on is there was an aerial flight that was performed. The aerial flight provided with uh, greater uh, emphasis and greater accuracy on the topography within the area. Uh, additionally, there was field topography that was done. Um, and what's occurring is it's essentially showing a watershed break just off property. So if you see this little dot right here, this is essentially, and it's a little hard to see. Can you, any chance you can zoom in more? There you go. I'm gonna kick this over. Beautiful. So this kind of hatched area is the area that we're talking about. This is 0.59 acres of uh, area that we're looking to essentially kick over to the property line. What's happening is there's an existing high point that's located approximately here where this dot is located. And that's where a watershed break is occurring. Uh, also in your packet is the watershed delineation that we performed. Just zoomed in enough where I can overlay this on top. So as you can see with this map, the high point is this ridge here and the watershed break, which is delineated by this large dash line is occurring here. You can see that there's topo that is essentially splitting along the property line and then hooks right here as it goes through and goes back right into the WRPD zone. Um, it's pretty cut and dry with regard to how the actual topography is working and that's where the split is. So we're looking to essentially move that line uh, on what we can actually do based on our property constraints um, right up to the property line based on the, top, the topo that's kind of kicking it over. It's kind of in a nutshell. Happy to answer any technical questions or if you have any questions for uh, the applicant with regard to, um, I guess, anything that we've already discussed. Mm -hmm. Steph. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so the mailings, um, the required mailings to the people within 100 and 200 feet rather um, are in order and the required referrals for this project have been done. Um, as many of you know, the Water Resource Protection District was adopted as an overlay on the zoning map in 1987. Its purpose is to regulate activities in the drinking water reservoir watershed, things that might degrade the water quality. The watershed was originally defined using USGS topographic maps. These maps, the scale of these maps is one inch equals 2000 feet, and the contours are at 10 foot intervals. So the boundary, once it was established on the, the quad maps, the USGS quad maps, was then transferred to the zoning map. At that time, it was the scale was one inch equals a thousand feet. So you can see there's some room for error there. So the WRPD regulations recognize that there might be detailed topography, more detailed topography, such as that that's required for a site plan. And that might show um, that some portions of the boundary are inaccurate. So the regulations lay out the method to change that boundary. Boundary has been changed in the past, um, adding an area that was identified as a future water supply, um, eliminating an area around the old Southeastern Connecticut Water Company wells off of Fishtown Road, once those wells were abandoned, and then modifying the boundary on a portion of the Flanders Road landfill. So the application has been reviewed by professional engineers in the Department of Public Works, as well as at Broughton Utilities, and both agree that the area in question does not drain towards the reservoir. 
The Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments does not see any intramunicipal conflicts and representatives from the Navy base have no comment. So if at the end of this hearing, you choose to um, adopt, we recommend that an October 1 be the effective date to give time to modify the matter. Mm -hmm. Does anyone in the public wish to address us on this change? Uh, Tom Olson, 188 Crosswinds Drive. I'm here as a representative for the Conservation Commission. Uh, we've taken a look at this um, as a conservation uh, commission and our, we're, we're not challenging anything uh, that the engineering side of it, but we're more concerned relative to what are the other effects if you're moving this boundary, because this boundary is right at a very critical point uh, if you take a look at the Groton Utilities uh, Drinking Water Quality Management Plan, it's a very distinct corner of it. Uh, if you go take a look at the public water supply map for the state of Connecticut, it's a very distinctive corner. You're basically changing a corner on a map that's, uh, and then also with the Connecticut Elevation Viewer, also has a very distinct corner at the map where you're here. And as far as when we're going and changing maps around, there's also implications outside of our community here. That we need to take into consideration and, and there needs to be a process uh, for informing all these other activities. And I'd like just challenge to the uh, com uh, commission here as far as what are the other implications of just, if you're giving a change here, how is that gonna be migrated into the other areas of the state and, uh, and ground utilities and other maps that are also in consideration. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, Gretchen Chiparini of 87 Phoenix Drive. Could, I am. You think that? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we ready? No, but Before you may want to pick out. up the. Could you take the microphone out? And, yeah, as, this just is always to make sure yeah. as we have to record these. There we go. Great. It's better. This is not too high for me. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's okay. Also come up. You can come up. <laughs> sure, absolutely. That's fine. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Wait. I have questions about this. I don't quite understand. But let me do my script, and then I'm going to ask you a question. You want to see first? Um, oh, that would be really great. Thank you. So this is mine. They're all locked. They're, They're all. Locked. Locked. Oh, so are we going to get a feedback loop going? Yeah. All right. So I'll start over. So Gretchen Chipperini, 87 Phoenix Drive. I'm the owner of the eastbound property. And this is showing up here. Let me get um, of this property. Um, I'm on the owner of uh, the property on this side. So I border this, this area. In fact, I'm the owner of the, the whole thing here. And the owner of the Super A property is right here, that's one, sitting next to me. Um, and I'm an engineer, the same time as Ms. type as Mr. Pritchard here. And I used to, so I'm a mechanical engineer, but I've done a lot of site work, tons of it in my life. My father was a civil engineer. I used to do work with him. I've always held the stick. Um, so, um. So the owner of this William Sealy School project wants to let out, be let out of the requirements of a water resource district for the strange reason that the topography of a property or water flow direction somehow changes when the resolution of measurement is changed to, to the better technology of measurement. This issue was explained to me on our, in my meeting I had with Deb Jones, and she just explained what she explained to me. The physical closeness of topo lines on a map tells one, the direction of water flow, i.e. the closer together the lines, the steeper the slope, the guiding runoff water in that direction. Change of the resolution of topo lines on a map has no effect on changing the grade of the real property in, in real life. The closest of topo lines every two feet as at every 10 feet shows that the water flow is towards Walker Hill or the reservoir in the subject area. For example, the 174 foot measurement line the subject area is closest to the 176 foot line, which means a drop of rainwater landing in the subject area will flow towards Walker Hill Road, 
or the reservoir towards my property. And it will go, the lines are closer together. I'm a little confused with, about this engineering group, what they're trying to, they're trying to say all these topo lines on the original map are wrong. And I'd like to know where they get their new day. I don't, I don't get it, to be honest with you. Where, where did it come from, a satellite? I, I don't know. I, I I was never told these topo lines are wrong. So I I don't understand why they would change. Um, so, and if you go to the next line down, then in the subject area, the 172 foot topo line is closer to the 174 foot line, closer than it when it when you go up up here. So I mean the water has to go this way because the lines are closer together over there. Where where this is. It's a little hard to see because there's the buildings here, but it's closer here than it is down here. So the water is going to go that way. Any way you look at it, this isn't rocket science. So I don't understand what they're talking about. Inclusion, most of the water landing from the heavens in the subject area will flow towards the reservoir. This burden on them of an area being in a water research district should not be changed because they don't like it. Apparently the water resource decision, I have not looked it up, has extra burdens. I'm in that district. I have not looked it up. Uh, and their application for this relief is mutually exclusive with them not being concerned by their argument in this application that the water flow from the subject area is in their planning flowing towards the area behind the Super 8 property, which is, as I just explained, I disagree. Their opinion is totally contradictory to a lack of safety concerns, we're going to get into that, to not putting up a retaining wall before building up 25 feet of unretained fill that when mixed with torrential rainfalls create a great danger to the downhill property owner, namely me and his building. This applicant is trying to burn both ends of the candle in their favor with this application with one, with on one hand saying the water from the subject area is not running towards the reservoir, but the other hand it is instead flowing towards the unretained and thus unsafe cliff of dirt that they have created. This is the very reason why these two issues are connected. These issues are connected. So they're saying the water is going over this way down here towards the super eight and we have a a real problem here. If they think that, then they should be doing a much better job in their construction that's going on right now. So I'm going to be giving you in the next part, Mr. Pritchard knows about this, um, pictures of this situation. But that uh, I understand. Like we can you told only, this earlier, we but, could only but address there's something to do each other. We can only address this right. change. So I'm map gonna, change. So I'm I'm confused. <laughs> where the, the, these engineers get their data from. They just throw out a map to you and draw this new continental divide. Essentially those, those these squares here are the new, they're saying that's that's a new continental divide. Water on one side is going one way or the other. Where did they get that from? Where in the world, they? I don't think you, you said, where did that come from? No, no, we can only. Oh, well, I don't an way. answer to that question. Yes, but let finish your statement because you're addressing. You address us. Oh, I'm sorry. I like no, to no. know. You can you can have him answer. Yes, if you have a question, he can answer it now. Later. I'd rather you finish your comments. No, I like to have continue with thought. I don't know where the the restructuring the re they're claiming this topo map is wrong. I think. Maybe, no? Okay, well, I don't understand th that in, in this topo map, if I'm a, you don't have to be an engineer to understand this. The topo lines are closer together up here than over here. So that's telling me the water is going this way. The topo lines are close. That water, when that drop of water comes from the sky, it hits there, and this water is going to go this way because the lines are closer together than that way. So, I don't, I don't understand. So they're saying, no, that's not true. That this is the new continent. I say the continental divide goes, goes, goes kind of, it's curved. It kind of goes this way. You see how they get close together down here? So I don't agree with them about this. The water, maybe there's a little mix. Maybe some of it goes that way. When you get further uh, westward, some of it goes this way, but the bulk of this area goes, towards Walker Hill Road, which is towards the reservoir. So, and I don't know why we should all just accept some engineering company that says, well, this is the new map. 
this is the new continental divide. Where did you get that? Did you go out there and resurvey? First of all, they're doing construction here. This this site is changing shape as we speak. Every day it's changing shape. I can't walk in there with my leg and they have fencing around it. So I don't know. I don't think they've done work up at this upper part. I think it's a, I went to school here. So I kind of know the lay of the land here. And I don't think they've done anything to change it. So I pretty, you know, I know from experience where where things flow. I'm the neighbor. So I don't think they've done anything. They've changed, they've brought tons of fill down near me. They've brought lots of fill in, but I don't think up there they have. So we need we need answers. So right now I don't agree with this new map. And I don't think right. we should accept it without more answers. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, the engineer. I want to explain. Um, I don't know if you can blow up the. Well, yep. It's hard to see. Anything I can map. This guy, which makes more sense. Does this allow me to explain how to delineate a platform? Uh, so. Once again, just for the record, uh, Rock and Associate Civil Engineer with SLR International Corporation. Um. So the description was essentially foretold with regard to the proximity of contours to contours, but it's not just the proximity of contours to contours. It's also the angle at which the contour um, is actually transcribed. And what happens is based upon that transcription, uh, water travels perpendicular to the contour. So just to give you an example, uh, if you're looking here, you're seeing these contours kind of parallel to each other. That's where water's flowing in this direction. So it's going essentially this way. So as you go closer and closer to essentially this kind of triangular piece, this is a break. So that means water's going this way and then water's going this way. And then what we're doing is we're following that break essentially with this new line. And that's what is actually this side of the watershed versus this side of the watershed. And that specifically this ridge that's going along the property line, you can see it kind of described here, 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 especially as you go on the property line, you can see there's a very big inflection point as you're going forward. That's why we're moving this line over because that inflection point is really where the break in the water is. Some is going to the right, some is going to the left. You can even see here, there's kind of a bevel here. This means that it's a trough situation. So it's high, low, which means that there's a swale essentially going back along this edge. Um, that's kind of how a delineation works in a nutshell. And hopefully I could articulate that pretty well. Um, I guess the second point these, that was made. These contour lines. Yep. Right, where you have the arrow. Correct. Right yep. and arrow. What's what's that reading? You know, what's the, how so, many feet? Of, Oh, so separate? these are uh, two foot contours. Yeah, so but every I mean, what's... Mm -hmm. it's like yeah, no, it's, it's between yeah. 174 and 172. You're going 160. Yeah. Yeah, as you lines at four feet there. Yeah, that's that's higher than this. Okay. The scale of the map. Yeah, there's the this scale is uh one inch equals fifty. No, you can there yeah. Yeah, they're but they're lined up. Elevation. The elevations are elevation. Oh, the scale is one inch with equals fifty. So it essentially it looks like there may be so that's two no. feet or get yeah, two feet in every fifty feet or so. It's got stamps on the yeah. right. but if you look at these lines, there's mm. that's so small. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's where it essentially breaks in between the two. Um, and then there was also the question of where we got the uh, the new topography versus the old topography. So as Deb was mentioning, that the uh, the original uh, WRPD zone was delineated using the uh, USGS mapping. Um, when we did the Trinsquare project, what occurred was an aerial flight of photogrammetry. So what happens is there is an actual plane that flies above. They shoot. Uh, individual points. It's a cluster of points that essentially create the new uh, tin, which essentially gives you the triangulation of what's going to occur with the topography. Those have elevations, locations, everything. 
and a license surveyor puts all that together. They essentially say, hey, here's your new map. You know, once we got the new map, we were like, oh, you know, there's a ridge here. There's, no, it's not necessarily the same as the USGS map. This is significantly more accurate. Uh, additionally, with this, as part of the project, there was field topo, which I was mentioning, which is, you know, a, what I would say is a step above what a aerial topography could actually occur. You're getting into uh, more refined topography because you're actually trying to locate specifically where things are, what elevations are. And that is actually what creates how the contours are moving. Um, so those specific points and those specific elevations um, triangulate and a line is drawn to connect what would essentially be all of the, let's say it's the 174.0 points. It connects all the 174.0 points in this line. So if you were to essentially follow this line with a surveyor, he should get 174 every time along the line. And that's essentially what a contour is. Um, da, da, da. I think that hopefully explains it. Does that explain that for you? Or do you have any, I don't know. No. Okay. We have. Understood. Has to, we have to. Okay. Got it. I like, it. I like the decision. <clears throat> And that other people. <clears throat> so I guess it's sort of hard for us to <laughs> make the Mr. Chairman, well, uh, flaw specifically on how it's specifically one of the comments that was made was this was reviewed by uh professional engineering staff of the town of Rodney. Yeah, well that's what I asked for some yeah. evidence of that and that we can use yeah. that because somebody in this Town staff has to agree. Mr. Chimp, may I uh, address? Sure. <laughs> um, the the dotted line that you show on your map Correct. is different from what you're proposing. Correct. Because we can only zone change on our property. Right. So we basically go right up to the property line. Okay. We don't own, obviously. So I think this is owned by Brown Utilities, and then this this is a uh, just a neighboring abutter. We can't. You know, legally change anything on the property. But I mean, the overlay zone was meant to be an overlay zone over various properties, right? Certainly, and and if those property owners had agreed to join this application, mm -hmm. we could change the zone there as so well. that one, right? Exactly. The actual one, it, it, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So this might be something that you know the town wants to take up, um, and you know, notifying property owners that that we're going to be changing you know, the overlay zone on your particular properties, but um, the applicant chose to just address their property. Um, and, and one other point, I just wanna make the, the approved Triton Square site plan does show the water resource protection district as it's shown on the zoning map. And it does, uh, it is consistent with all the regulations of the WRPD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyone else in public wish to make any questions? USGS. Oh, oh wait a minute. You can we, we, we these issues have to be addressed to us and we make the decision. Oh. <laughs> well, you can make a statement again. Well, I don't. Nope. Well, you have, have, to, you can, you have to go to the microphone. Yes, you have to come up. But we need, and you know, it's it's recorded. Um, the mic doesn't pick you up back there. You can. You can come back and sit the same chair. If, if you have a still have a concern, just state what your concern is. Yeah, you can use this mic. You can use the chair. Oh, you want to speak uh, the microphone? Right. My concern is, I like to know what's being gained by this. I, there, is that there must be a motivation to do this. If it's not that important, then why are they doing? It? And my hunch is, I told you, I haven't read the water resource to, you know requirements. There's something they don't like in that. I think that should be known to you. What are they after? What are they frustrated? With? Something they, and I, it may be an increase in parking that they're being held up on. I don't know. I don't know why they're not telling you. I think I'd like to know what it is. 
Um, and I don't, so are, we're not saying the USGA maps are wrong, the topos, I don't, I don't quite understand. Are they wrong? Are we staying tonight? Are we setting a precedent here that we should ignore all USGA maps, topo maps now? I mean, I don't, I don't quite get it. Uh, you have to make a decision uh, which way you want to go. And I don't, and I, uh, I think an overlay should cover, we should all, all the property owners should got a notice. I guess they did, but that it should be changed in the whole overlay. You know, it, I mean, you can't, this is kind of halfway. Half, it's, why should it all be applied to them? It should be applied to everywhere. We're changing the contours. We should change it everywhere. We should change it throughout the whole town. You want to be fair about it. So I'm a little, I'm a little confused. There, there's motivation here. What is it? What's their motivation? There's something they don't like in those requirements. What are those? They haven't said. And, um, and, and why aren't we applying the whole overlay over everything and, and being fair to everybody? Now, you can't expect people, yes, I'm an engineer, I'm familiar with this stuff. Most of the people around aren't, you know, and this could adversely affect people. They should be made aware of this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, don't, I, I just don't think we have enough information yet, you know, and uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. So I'm confused what maps we should be looking at. I think we're creating confusion. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So if no one else in the public has anything to state, you know, open it up to the commission, commissioners to see if they have anything in the state and questions to be answered. I, I think uh, from staff, um, from, I, I don't see that this is changing the topo maps. I mean, there's nothing, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with what the USGA has drawn on there the elevations and condors. No, this does not have any impact. Yeah. I didn't on think the so. I've just, I want to make sure that that's Togo clear. Topo maps, yeah. that's correct. No, that's no that's good. Yeah. And so it's just how that map was and is now interpreted. It, it's just the scale of that map. And it's more. Mm -hmm. Right. This, accurate. Uh, right. 10 foot contours, two foot contour. Um, two foot contours is going to give you a more detailed look at what the topography actually is rather than 10 foot, rather than 100 foot. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. So, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I think, uh, yeah, usually um, when you come up with questions like this, it's usually um, pretty cut and dry. This is unusual in the, the way the topography goes right there. And I did spend quite a bit of time today because I'm I am very familiar with looking at maps and I'm very interested in watersheds and all that other good stuff. And to me, and I use I have the US GS map on my phone. <laughs> Even looking at that, which is not as accurate as what we have here, right there. It's like in the in the sense that you don't have the two foot lines on there, but you do on Yukon system. I was looking at that and I felt very comfortable that what you were saying was accurate. Um, I don't know all your reasons for doing that, but the mere application that that should be a change because the way you did it now refines that and really shows that little ridge in there and all that and how things are draining. I'm perfectly comfortable with that because that's what it looked like to me. So that's all. Mm -hmm. so we, for references that we don't have, do we have to identify those? In terms of? Well, what she was just talking about the, the maps. The Yukon maps. I mean, yeah, those are not in the file. No, I know that. But, right. Well, Yukon Advanced Viewer. Because okay. when you zoom okay. in, that, no, that's just, online. Okay, when you zoom thanks. in, you get to a two foot uh, contour line. Okay. Hmm? And specifically, the, uh, the Yukon maps that she's referencing are the 2016 aerial. Mm. Um, and that's specifically LIDAR map. Great, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Thanks. Sorry, I should bring my references. No, well, <laughs> yeah. this is a yes. close to I didn't even think about it. Yes, of course, mm -hmm. no problem. Steve, do you have any? Um, is it pertinent to know why this is taking place? 
it, it's not something that's required by the regulations in order to apply for a change. Um, all that is required is a demonstration of what the actual topography is at a, a better scale at two yeah. foot contours. Yeah, well, what the, who means the impact? What's the impact? If you're in the WRPD or not? Sure. So, so you will not. Uh, you know, the WRPD has um, restrictions on certain uses um, that might um, degrade water quality. There's a limit on impervious surface. Uh, there's a limit on using salt. Um, there's a number of of other restrictions in the WRPD that might not necessarily apply to the general CR zone. But as far as is that what your question was or right. okay but for the purpose of what they're doing they don't that is that's correct okay um i just you know the making it on the property line bugs me because we didn't do that originally when we created the overlay zone mm -hmm. and I just wish we could do it the right way. I, I understood. We we had that conversation actually, um, <laughs> and and the applicant did not um, coordinate this application with the abutting property owners. And when the zone was created, I mean, we don't have the leverage to just do it the right way. I mean, sure, you can you can instigate a map change. We can, instigate. of course, you can. Yeah, yep, of course, you can. Okay, you're not a GS map. No, the overlay. It's yeah. the overlay. Yeah, absolutely. It's the overlay. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything okay. else? I think that's it. Kevin, do we, we do. So, so did the applicant want to state why they're doing this? You know, uh, it's not required. Yes. yes. Sure. I sure. Can I show you the results later? Sure. sure. It's, yeah. sure. Yep. <clears throat> so, the upper portion. Layout there. We have a basic present, basically useless in the middle of our parking lot up there. We have a pond essentially in the middle of our parking lot. You, you gotta, yeah, it's cool. yeah. We, we essentially have a pond in the middle of our parking lot um, that's meant to, to keep that water in place there. Um, because of we you can't have impervious surfaces in the zone and we're a little tight on parking here so we'd, we'd like to make some parking spaces up in up in the corner there we figure we can probably get about 10 to 15 spots up there so it's 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 an unfortunate design in the area it it doesn't look right doesn't feel right and we'd like to have a few more parking spaces in the area but you still have your um no, no, the pond will go away. The pond is specifically there because it's in the WRPD uh, mm -hmm. zone. So what our argument is that it's actually unnecessary to have that pond there because the water is not shedding into the watershed area. Second question again is the engineer though. So I understand, I understand pitch and algorithm, algorithm very well. But your point is at times it depends how the rain falls. Angle of the rain when you draw no, the so angle of the, the angle of the ground. Mm -hmm. The ground. The ground the ground is really what's directing the flow because mm -hmm. you can have let, let's say that you had an isolated storm literally of like a let's say a foot by a foot. Right. If it hits uh let's say a triangle of of ground, it's gonna shed in both directions or all three directions. You know, it, it's gonna go that way. So that's how it's delineated is we're figuring out where that raindrop is going and where that watershed is specifically breaking. So left being, you know, water's going that way, right being, you know, going the other way. Yeah. Well, what you presented is a science whereby it's not like related to random entropy. No, this, this is hard fact. <laughs> right. And so both the town that looked at that as well. That, that, that's correct. As well as professional engineers in our Public Works Department and professional engineers over at Groton Utilities. Okay. I have one other question please for the Conservation Committee. What are the implications you're talking about um, as far as what you, what you reference? Well, now it kind of goes back to what um, Ms. Sutherland mentioned that there's other activities out there that are have already made a determination in where the, where the line is. Admittedly, it's at a higher level, but you're moving this stuff 
And are you going to communicate that to these other people? That's our concern. Meaning the abutters or whoever's you're you're changing what the town has been using, right. okay? And so and and the, the, right now the the way that they they uh, run utilities, the, the state of Connecticut public water supply, it's all has a line that incorporates that corner right now. Sure. So you're moving that, right. okay? And are you going to now that you're taking that knowledge? Are you then going to transmit that to to get other people to move their lines also? That's our concern. Well, no. <laughs> no, no, that's exactly right. This right. is a line on the zoning map that, only, zoning map. that yeah. only influences the zoning on it. That's right. But so the issue I have is that you have improved topographical information now. Is that going to be transmitted? Well, that's the question that we're asking. Okay. Can I, can I, sure. So, I guess technically that dialogue has already technically started because the uh, ground utilities is being supplied the map. They already have the map. So at least from that perspective, they are also under Pura, which requires them to essentially do an assessment of their watersheds and their mm -hmm. like inventory. So if there's an adjustment that's already kind of steamrolling in place, it stands to reason that'll go that far. Um, obviously, I'm not the one that would be coordinating that effort, but logistically that's kind of where i see things going it would just make a lot of sense so that's my technical opinion that's not mm -hmm. thank you yes you can you, you to come back you, yeah give her i'm in favor of the overlay becoming part of the town, the plan, the, you know, part of wherever it goes, it should be changed and done right. Okay. And if that's the new data, technology changes, then we should do what we know. And uh, we shouldn't just cut off one corner and apply it for one. I didn't know you could do that. I, I'm, I'm kind of new to these overlays. I don't know much about them. I'm learning tonight. So I think we should just implement the whole overlay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're done with your notes. Um, I'm no, go ahead. Wait. No, go ahead. I just had one, one item. I would like to see the evidence, hard copy evidence that. The public work, our public works department agrees with this change. Okay, and I have that via a conversation with the public works director, so I don't have it in an email at this point. Um, I can certainly get it and and place it in the file. Well, I don't know. Can we make a decision based no, on that no. without having? I, you can either make a decision based on my representation of my conversation with him. If you actually want to have something in writing Absolutely. before you, then you would need to leave the hearing open. That's correct. Since in reality, it's a safety issue. I mean, I do have, and I think you have it in your packet, mm -hmm. the comments from Broughton Utilities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah but I want to make sure it's that by a professional engineer. Yeah. Right, Carl Asimovic is a, a professional engineer. He is their stormwater engineer. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't have any. Did you want to keep the hearing open? Is that what you'd like to do? Well, I'd rather close it. I mean, we don't have to. No, I know that. But if, if we have something in writing that says that I didn't know that. Uh, <clears throat> That's what my concern is. So. I didn't think we had. Well, there was something in there. Just looking for it. Maybe I didn't print everything out. Mm. Yeah, it's in here soon. Hard time finding it.
I had that stuff. This one from Groton Utilities. But it just says Groton Utilities Electrical Project Management has no objection to the request. That's correct. Yeah, that's it. That's correct. It was um, reviewed by Doug LaFontaine, one of the uh, managers of the water division um, in concert with Carl Asimovic, who is the, again, part-time professional engineer for stormwater. But this doesn't. Well, no, I guess this I guess that the uh, information you know, is here in a roundabout way. It, it is. Um, I gave you their comments. I did not give you the email that they sent transmitting those comments, mm -hmm. which was Carl and I looked at this and um, <laughs> we have no comments. See attached. Yeah. Well, it does sort of have their names. Names on the review check. Is anyone else? Are there any other issues other than the administrative ones? Hmm? But that doesn't affect the proposed uh, the application. No, no, it doesn't. Hmm? No, nope, it's just wanna... a matter of whether you're comfortable with it. That's all. With the application, which Correct. could be the that's right zoning overlay zoning that change. Right. You just want a, a formal affirmation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it should be on file. Yeah. In case there's a new So can we just later. make that a condition? I mean, no, uh, we cannot condition. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. If you want to have that in the file, you need to continue the hearing so I can get an email from the public works director. That would be considered new information. Oh, yeah. yeah it yeah, would be not. normal. All right. Even though you've verbalized it. I, I mean, he is technically your staff. So... Yeah, just somebody in the exactly. town. Yeah. Hmm? Either public works. Yep. Or hmm. Yeah, it's not it's I just think we should have something on file that says the town rather than just rely on the, the applicants. Yeah. yeah. Technical. It would be nice. Hmm? Okay. So so I'd like to quit, keep the hearing open. Okay. Um, we can have that information, present that information. Does anyone have any other questions? So, so what's the date of this? Uh, uh, yeah, 26. Okay, so when you make your motion, just reference the day that you're going to continue the hearing. To okay, so I'll we'll make a No one has any other questions or anything? No. So make a motion then to uh, continue the uh, public hearing to our next meeting, regular meeting in September 26th, 2022. Second. So second. Any discussion on the motion? So I'll vote on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Good. Thanks. So our next item is uh, on the agenda is approval of minutes of previous meetings. We have August 8th and August 24th. And I'll entertain a motion for approving the minutes of August 8th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Did you get those? Yeah, I got those. Yep. Oh, okay. Does anyone have any uh, corrections to the August 8th meeting 
minutes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I no, well, I'm sorry. I think there's some questions from the audience. I, I think we're done. What? We're done with a public hearing. Till next, till the 26th. But we do have public communications that you may want to speak for that. Sorry, I apologize. I don't know what to say. No, we've we're continuing the public hearing to our next meeting. What? No, we are. That's later on. Our first item on next item on the agenda is approval of our minutes. That's what we're doing now. And that will be public communications. That's where you can. I didn't know it was that bad. Pull it in, in, pull it in close and you can hear. No. Yeah, there are. Frequencies. Oh, are they? So, yeah, they are. So if you get very close, you can hear it from coming from the ceiling. Right, exactly. So I'm not close enough to the microphone. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. That is right. Good point. We do have the headsets. Mm -hmm. We also have headsets. For your use, if, if yes. Talk louder. <laughs> Talk louder. <laughs> you can sit closer to it. First row is empty. Yeah. Hmm? All right. Does anyone have any corrections to the minutes? Nope. So then uh, we'll vote on the motion to approve the uh, minutes as written for the August 8th meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. <laughs> I don't know. One of these days I'm going to learn. <laughs> I OK, be. the motion is carried for in favor. One abstention. Steve. The next uh, minutes is the August 24th meeting. I'll entertain a motion for approving the minutes of August 24th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Does anyone have any corrections for the August 24th meeting? No. Nope. Oh, told me. Oh. Debbie gets an attaboy from the Grand Greens. <laughs> Go on, start with this. <laughs> so, about, uh, approval of the uh, minutes of August 24th is written. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Okay. The next item is public communications. Does anyone on the commission have any communications? or addressed. I have a couple of items that I want to go on record for. We received uh, an item from Tom Santorini regarding his interpretation of uh, Pleasant Valley Road South zoning determination. And we received uh, input from Jenna the Surf regarding artificial turf. And Town of Ledger, we received uh, notice for a public hearing tomorrow on, on Thursday night, I guess it is, for uh, an application for I guess, a zoning. For a special permit. Permit. So if you want to provide comment, you should add that to your agenda so that and we can discuss we it. And we received comments from Ian Ciparini and on this Sealy, the Trident School project or Trident Square and also from uh, the cl town clerk on the same subject. And 
on from uh, from Sharon Swan also on the same subject. And on these items, I think uh, if anyone has any concerns on the zoning officers thing, we should add that to agenda. Does anyone have any concerns on doing that? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Tom, um, the artificial start. Going to be surfs. Well, I guess we could just handle that later. But the one that does have to be added to the agenda is the uh, Town of Ledger's uh, referral for their uh, special permit, which I'd like to add to the uh, referral section of the new business. Sure. Mr. Chair, was there any guidance on that? What do we know? What they well, asked? Well, I think that's what we would hear from the town staff. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank that you. was your that package. <laughs> this is the hmm? I couldn't I couldn't understand what was going on. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Huh? A lot of documentation. A lot of documentation. And also whether we want to address uh Gretchen's uh, concerns. I think we should add that. Or I can address it under report of staff. Or you can do it under report of staff. You, yeah. you will do it there. Okay. And then we can see if we want to need to take any additional action. Okay. Does anyone in the public wish to address us on there? If you want to come up, Gretchen, again. You're getting your exercise in tonight. Huh? It's a hard task, but we can run around. Yeah. I'm gonna be up here in this evening. Yes, you can I be can. up here. No, that's fine. I want to see the people. <laughs> All right. Pass the zone. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello again. My name is Gretchen Ciparini, 87 Phoenix Drive. I'm here to discuss the dangerous situation in the, created in the last couple of weeks by the owner of the project being built at the former William Silly School site, which presently sits at a significantly higher elevation along the east border of the 100 room Super 8 Hotel, on which land I own in my and, it, and it is where my storage building is. And you can see that in this first picture here. Um, and that pile of dirt behind it, which I estimate to be about 25 feet tall. And it's quite vertical with forms for footings being built at the top of it. This just happened in the last two weeks, I would say. This commission proved a significant two-tiered re retaining wall to be built along this border because the elevation change of about 25 need feet needs to be retained so that a landslide does not occur onto my property with the risk of causing serious property and human harm. Normal construction procedure is to build a retaining wall first and then backfill and lifts with compaction of each lift as you go. Unretained fill cannot be compacted without retention. Okay. And I want to just give a simple example. I almost made one and brought it in to show you, but then I decided you can understand. If I built, put two by fours on edge, a square, and left one side off, and put sand in it, and push in the middle, where would the sand go? It would come out the side. You cannot compact unretained dirt. It's it's liquidy. It moves. Okay. And they're going to complain. They're going to say they compacted it. Well, you can't do it. Uh Therefore, talking about any compaction data is a, is a moot point until the new ground created is fully retained. To add insult, the owner of this property is now building his concrete reinforced footings on top of this unretained soil with heavy equipment, adding thousands of additional pounds of pressure on top of this wall of unretained dirt. The owner is risking structural damage to their own building by building its fitting, footings on this unstabilized ground. As you can see in the second picture right here, 
this this uh, goes on for several hundreds of feet. This is long, this unretained situation. And it just happened. It was just there. Um, I recently met with the town inspector on site. You know him, probably Scott. And strangely, he spent most of the time with me showing me pictures on his phone of the significant damage done in Vermont from the force of water and soil. He was evasive in telling me how he was going to put a stop to this ongoing dangerous situation. I was told by Scott that the retaining wall has not been built because their designer does not like the visual design of what was ordered and also because there's a delay in delivery of the block. The, none of this has any relevancy to safety right now, which has been completely ignored by the actions of this owner, but should take precedence over any of these excuses. No, show, no fill should have been allowed to be placed to such a height until a retaining wall was first built, period. I've never seen anything like this in my professional career. The block wall arrives tomorrow. That would take time to be installed in time for the hurricane season upon, will not, will take time and not in time for the hurricane season upon us. And construction timing and order events do matter. Enforcement of safe construction procedures, the responsibility of the building enforcement officer under the leadership of our planner, John Reiner. And competence in this matter is putting property and life in danger right now as we speak. I, along with the owner of the Super 8 Hall Hotel, who's Terrence Wong, who's sitting behind me, then met with Deb Jones, who went on to tell us that she knows nothing about construction and that if this continues until after the growing scene without a retaining wall, that she is going to require them to put up another silt fence and some hay bales. I fail to understand any relevancy to her remarks. A foot and a half high stake silt fence and stake bales is like reengaging the deck chairs on the Titanic while sinking. And there's no growth of anything in, on this virtually vertical wall of dirt. So the growing season has no relevancy to this situation. There's nothing there. It's just dirt. As I already said, we are at the peak of the hurricane season. Right now, a hurricane named Lee is heading our way, and there are three more behind that. The severe landslide damage in Vermont was created by less than hurricane level winds and rain. As a professional, I give this wall of dirt a 95% chance of creating property and bodily harm if we get a hurricane, and a still high probability we have heavy rains less than hurricane level. The combination of dirt and water creates a force that is capable of destroying anything in its past, especially a wood stick built building like my storage building and the Super 8 Hotel. By the way, the Super 8 Hotel supports about 20 families of employees and owners. The town of Grant has not been now been put on notice that, God forbid, if any harm is caused on this property due to neglect of the enforcement of common sense construction practices and or, and or effective landslide risk mitigation, that it will be held fully responsible for all damage to property and person, which can come to millions of dollars and maybe even loss of life. Anyone else wish to address us tonight? Yes. You stay your own. I'm um, Anthony DeJoy. I'm the owner of the property. Uh, we take complaints like this uh, very seriously. Um, so the first thing that we did was we sent our engineers out there to do an SME inspection report. Um, the report came back. Uh, the findings were that the SME controls are in place. They're done well. Um, we had them make some recommendations on how to bolster those um, s &E controls. We rolled uh, erosion mats on the hill, uh, compacted mulch check, check dams. Um, we, we built a swale. Um, a couple additional uh, rows of silt fence have gone up in the meantime. Um, but what she's saying is simply completely untrue. The slope in the back, it's about 16 feet tall to one to one. Um, we added six feet of material on one, one section of the foundation. Um, to, we picked it up about six feet in those eight lifts. Uh, we had soil compaction tests that were done, supervised by licensed engineers. And there's presently no risk of a mudslide occurring. The things that she's alleging are fantastical. She's throwing arbitrary numbers and values on, on risk, and it's, it's fantastical. And, uh, it's starting to borderline harassment at this point. 
She's called the state building inspector who came out and saw the site and had no issue. She's called the town inspector who came out on site and had no issue. Our engineers have no issue. Our construction team has no issue. Um, and at this point, she's um, reverted to calling our insurance carriers. She's called our bank today. So at this point, she's she's just harassing everybody. She has a phone to pick the town. She's taking it out on, on us. So I have a copy of the SNE control report. I also have the compaction test for that material. Which? This one's super that look like. So that's the SNE control. If you look at some of the pictures, um, the way that she's framed the photos, she's at a bubble or a nice sort of photos. So it, it looks like a tsunami so now I'm coming to But if you look at some of the pictures in there, it's, it's not. Not 25 feet long, so we're here. So it's 16. 16 feet, and 6 feet, and that was half miles. Um, and it was fun to do this, and there were passion tests that we got fast, uh, 95% of the past, but that was that. This was a uh, structural bill, it's tested materials, passed the SIM test, passed that three and layers. So we're not really deep sand up on the handle. Uh, we did make a change on the type of block that we're using there uh, for aesthetic purposes, but that's not the reason why the walls are not constructed yet. The block is actually scheduled to be delivered on Wednesday. Um, they, they're engineering systems. You can't build these retaining walls. They have drained and aggregate, they have compacted fill, they have engineered materials. Um, there's a polymer genome in that goes pretty split and the bar off of that wall. So it's it's a very, very difficult task to build the foundations, you know, build those walls, and then go back in and dig behind them to start ripping on geo grid, to start ripping on the granite dagger, and, and compact materials. So that's the, that's the reason why we're structuring the best the best uh, things to action there is to do the foundations and then come in and build the walls. So we have a final floor list today and tomorrow on the walls, and we lost everything tomorrow, and we'll have that also on the yeah. We ask questions. Well, yeah, but I wanted to have a presentation sure. from Thank that you. later. Yep. I don't know if it makes sense to just start. It's up to you. I, I can. Hmm? I'd love to hear from staff. Well, oh, yeah, but I, yeah, we're going to do that later. But... Okay. And, and again, I said we take these complaints very seriously. We sent the engineers out there immediately. Um, we, we, well, I talked about your um, SME controls out there. Uh, which we're basically going to just dig up now in the next couple of days when we start building the wall. Um, but again, this is this is has gone far and above a normal complaint. When I said she's called the state, she's called state reps. Um, she's called our bank. She's called our insurance carriers. Um, it's it's borderline harassment and in libel and harassment. Right. Can you just for the record, say what an S and E control is. Uh, sediment and erosion control. Thank you. I just want to hear happen. You know, yeah, when sorry. we use work terms like that, it should be clear. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. So I'd like to continue on with the uh, the agenda. Our next item is site plans. We have uh, CSP twenty three oh one. Landscaping improvements, 11 Park. <laughs> and we'll be right back, please. Step out. Oh. You want to state your name and address or good evening. Form you work for. Good evening. I'm Keith Nielsen from DACO Incorporated, and I prepared the application documents for Mr. Yerke um, that you'll be considering tonight. Um, this is for a coastal site plan for Mr. Yerke to conduct uh, yard regrading and relandscaping of his property at 11 Park, Park Place in Groton. It's uh, right on the Mystic River. And um, the application drawings that uh, that we submitted are based on an A2, um, uh, T2 topographics and boundary survey for the site. Um, 
The issue at hand is that the property occasionally floods and the lower lawn um, stays saturated for an extended period of time, which he can uh, modify by um, uh, supplementing the uh, soils on the site and regrading them to uh, be typically 1% side slopes and 2% longitudinal slope down from the middle of the lawn down to the edge of the uh, retaining wall, uh, which is a uh, mortared uh, stone and concrete um, uh, structure. This site was uh, formerly a boat yard um, more than 100 years ago, and uh, which accounts for the odd shape. Um, there were two access wharves um, on either side of the boat launchways, and then um, uh, as it was transitioned into a residential uh, property, um, the area was generally landscaped. Um, the property does host tidal wetlands vegetation, and the lower um, intertidal zone is bare gravel and rocks, um, which um, is not a part of this project. So um, in my early meetings with um, uh, the uh, staff here, um, uh, it was decided that uh, the most suitable project would be uh, minimal landscaping. Um, we've um, accounted for approximately the addition of 450 cubic yards of gravel and topsoil materials. The existing grass will be stripped from the site. And then once the um, uh, new gravel and topsoil is graded and um, um, adequately suitably, suitably compacted, it will be replanted with um, uh, salt tolerant grasses. Um, the plan that we've presented is very simple. Keith, do you actually want to put it right up there? Yeah, and I'll put it up on the on the yeah. ceiling. Oh, you gotta put it. You wanna move it so I get some it's upside down. Thank you. Okay. So the existing conditions are shown on the uh, left side of the drawing, and uh, we've uh, colorized a little bit here to differentiate between uh, tidal wetlands vegetation, the beach, and the existing lawn. The house is up here approximately 25 feet out of the scope of the, uh, the survey and out of the drawing. Um, and uh, so we are not getting the information for two of the existing lawn. Um, the limited grading is going to be about five feet, uh, just uphill of the five existing five five curve, which shows up in both um, both views. And you can see that instead of the four contour and three contour um, uh, going down fairly uniformly to this low flat area on both sides of one, so we're going to be going to the five contour to four contour. About one percent, sorry, two percent slope in the middle of the lawn, one percent slope on the edges, and one percent side slope in both the areas. The water is going to be right this way, this way, this way, and that way. And it will be right to the edge of the uh, um, existing um, uh, lawn and then down the property. So we're not directing uh, any grades off-site. And um, by using the grades and gradients that have been shown here, the, um, um, there will be the ability for maximizing groundwater absorption. And uh, the lawn will look uh, spectacular. It looks great now. And uh, Mr. Yerke is an arborist and uh, a botanist. And uh, landscaping is going to be business all its life. And um, this place will be the main buildings. We respectfully request that you have any questions that we have to address. All right. Does staff make the, their presentation and then open it up to the commission? All right. Good evening. Um, just to reiterate a few things that um, was discussed the site is located within the coastal area management plan, thus requiring the camera view. Uh, the 
the the proposed of edimit, uh, edimit, <laughs> erosion and sediment control um, uh, finds it meets the requirements and will protect the coastal resources from disturbance. One of the things that wasn't shown is there is an existing uh, public access at the end of Park Place. Um, it's adjacent to the project site on the southeast side. Public Works had initially had a requirement to remove the small bushes within the edge of the right of way, but after reviewing in the field with the applicant, um, the, uh, basically the director of Public Works rescinded this requirement. Uh, the bushes are minor in nature and they do not encroach or impede the public's uh, access to the water. Uh, the owner is, however, aware that they are in the right of way and could be removed in the future if the town issued and were to do so. Um, there are uh, no known or foreseeable adverse impacts to the existing coastal resources, and the project site will be completely restored and once completed, better address runoff and flooding issues currently at impacting the sites. Um, I think you all got a copy of the draft motion um, and, and the staff summary sheet. Um, if you didn't, I have plenty of copies right here as well. Okay. So anyone will open up the commissioners on any questions they might have, Mike? Uh, is the uh, public access identified? Uh, I mean, with a sign or something? It is. Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. It is. Yeah. yeah. I don't have any questions. So, so my only question was if you're going to use salt tolerant grass because I know GLP was using that quite successfully. So you answered that question. That's good. Steve. No comments. Kevin. Sure. I have a couple. So uh, can you show us the right of way on that and where the bushes yeah. are right now? We're we're instead of park place here. Yeah. Um is the right of way and the uh, the bushes are, are right about where it says park. Right. Okay. So the bushes are in the right of way or they're not. They are in the right of way. Why are the, I don't get the bushes. I don't understand that. Why so, are the bushes in the right of way? The um the Mr. Yerke didn't fight there. He, he's just um he is uh, uh, taking care of them and uh, but he's left. He is left. And he understands that they're in the right away. He understands it. So the staff, why wouldn't someone if the bushes are in a right away, which is a public launch, why wouldn't we ask that those bushes are? So again, part of so Director Public Works did bring that up that they were within the right of way. And um he actually went down there to meet with the applicant specifically specifically about them. About talking about them removing them and when he went down there the pictures that, the pictures that were taken before versus what's there now the bushes are much smaller and they are not in the way there's plenty of access down there so basically the director said that he didn't have a problem with them as they are right now and they do not impede any access there's a, a, a it's a slight wall so the the it's not just a straight right of way all right there's a little teeny jog at the end and that jog in the end has a couple of bushes there that were planted by the last owner, from what I understand. And so uh, the director basically said that they're fine as is with the understanding that if in the future the town, if they get too big or if they become an impediment, that the town would order them to be removed. But it's the land landowner's bushes. That's what I don't get. So if he knows they're in the right of way, why don't we at this time? Right? Yeah. Bring to the property, to the property. Oh, and that part of it. Yes. Part of the request, right? That those bushes That's are what to be trimmed, trimmed and not extend <clears throat> past that right away property line. But they, they do they do right now. Right. We put that um we put that notification on there before we were able to meet with uh very can over. And uh, when we went and discussed the project at the beginning of the uh, contract of I was cutting down bushes. Um, Greg also acknowledged that uh, if we'd open the area up, that it would be a scar on the land that uh, would uh, open it up to uh, erosion that would not be uh, um, productive for the town or for the applicant. And uh, it was just a slight effect. You know, they. Um, they are decent looking in decent looking landscapes and it does protect the land and uh, there would be no harm in it. And so but like them. he's a landscape person and I'm sure he could cut those in a different way, would know that landscape, right? My only point is if we have a public right away and we have a which I presume it's a boat launch, right? 
and we know that there is a landowner who has encroached on that, I can't see moving ahead an application that has um, that encroachment, right? That's my thing. Right? And I do have, if you would like to see the email communications from Craig, yeah, I'm happy I'm to just, share that. I'm just well. talking yep, my opinion it. live. Yep, Thank you. Uh, with regard to the boat launch, uh, I've been working across the street from this site for uh, 22 years, and I've never seen any that use this site. I know that there is a robo um, thing down on the side. I don't know what it is. They left it. I, I believe it's abandoned because it has press trade marks on it. There is a path that is worn through this truck. I don't know if Laura indicating where they want to go, where they drag it through, and so on. And I know it could use that boat. Uh, in, in my opinion, the landscape that is there does make the area look nice, and it does help stabilize the ground. And if you were to uh, make it a traditional tool, and you don't make these kind of tools in them, they would be in the but it's preventing a boater. So if I have a 13 foot whaler and I'm trying to launch there, I can't launch that whaler as it sits right now with those bushes. No, you. you the, the, uh, the terrain and the price about where the um, edge of the right of way is there, that's a probably one to two foot drop. Right? Uh, you, can't, you can't take a five feet kind of boat down there and you want to. Even if you drive the market, Yeah, the only last thing I was going to say is, is it, where the bushes are right now, they're up on a slight wall. So there's a, it, it, like I said, the, it's not a very straight right of way like this. There's a little jog at the end. And where the jog is at the end, there's actually um, a rock wall that, that kind of extends for the property owners. And the bushes are actually on top. They don't extend out. They're basically, there's enough room for, for like you said, like a small boat, kayak, canoe, something like that. And I guess that, that from what I understand, that's what it's been used for. But if it's something you want to grab, we can look at that. And it really is maintaining historic access to the water yep. as a whole. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. Right. We have a lot of things before the commission that continue to ask that, and that there's no prevention mm -hmm. of any access mm -hmm. in the right away, the original, and the high positive to the well. Mm -hmm. It looks like an unused street. I would also point out that the, the bushes are in this area. The street comes down like this and just makes a little jog that you mentioned. And uh, these uh, the bushes are clearly on the side. They are on the higher ground. Like Okay. No, I don't have any questions over camera. Does anyone else have anything? Uh, does anyone have a, have a problem with the proposed motion? Does anyone have a copy of the motion? Because I have additional copies here as well. So I don't have it in front of me again. Right? Yeah, okay, for so I read it. Everyone else is in? Yeah. Uh, what do I have? All right. It's, it's not a site plan, we just food in the can. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Anyone have any questions for me? Problem statement now? So I do. Wait. So my point is um, if the technical items don't address the bushes, which we say for the moment they're there, 
my belief is, and I've looked at it several times from the water and from my friends who still live there, which I do get to drop off, who actually maintains the end of that um, right of way, where it drops into the water by a foot or two. It's the town. It's the town right away. It's the right away. Right. 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 But we're just approving a can, not a site. Oh, yeah. I guess I have a question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the coastal site plan application CSP 23-01 landscaping improvements, 11 Park Place. We say Mystic, where is that? I guess 11 Park Place with the following conditions. One existing tidal vegetation seaward of the proposed erosion and sediment control shall remain undisturbed. Two technical items as raised by staff shall be addressed. Findings, the commission hereby finds that the application is modified is consistent with all applicable goals and policies of CGS 22A-92 and incorporates all reasonable measures which would mitigate adverse impacts of the proposed activity on coastal resources. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. So any discussion on the motion? The vote on then the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're moving on to uh, new business. Any new applications? No. Referrals, we have the one referral from the town of Lakey. If you want, we do. This can stay, make an interpretation. So I, 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 think, I think I understand all what's going these on pieces here. of paper. Applications and re. I don't know how many times the uh, plans got re revised. Yes, I'm, I'm just going to lay out in front of you the, the basic. Um, basic plan of the site. Um, so I, I believe they already held a public hearing in June and recognized that there was a flaw in their notification and that this commission was not notified because of the proximity to the property that the town line. Um, so it, it, it appears that this is an old excavation slash gravel operation um, that is continuing to operate and it's not clear in the ledger files whether it's grandfathered or whether there's only certain parts of the activities that are grandfathered and have been in place since before their zoning regulations. So this application is a special permit to continue excavation as as you can see on the plan um, to remove material um, and, and basically cart it off site um, through the town of Ledger. Uh, it is very close to the town line. Um, the access to this site is also serves as a driveway to um, a resident in the town of Broughton. Um, you can see that there's a water course there that flows north. Um, so it does not flow south to our reservoir. Um, and so the, you know, the, your, your role here is, is there any impact on the town of Broughton, the continuance of this and the special, the issuance of the special permit? Special permit sounds like riddles. Is you a, know, it, it, it kind of does I mean, sound that like that. I think, I think the applicant I, it, from what I could see of all of the information they put on their website, it looks like the applicant believes that that they're a grandfathered use. Yes. And it looks like the, the planner in doing some research thinks that maybe only some of those things are actually grandfathered. And so to clean all of this up, it, you know, they, they want to do a special permit on the site. Because it's a process. Yeah. Right. Well, it used to be a process. Right, exactly. Area. Yeah. Yep. Does anyone have any concerns? Well, this where is where is this? Yeah. So this is off of Route 12, mm -hmm. um, and it's off of Baldwin Hill Road, which is actually on our side of the borders, Pleasant Valley Road North. 
um, it's it's as you're going north on Route 12 and you cross the ledger line, it's the first road to the right is where you turn. I think there's a self storage facility up in there, um, and you know as well as as this operation and then and then the mm -hmm. Bolo property. Yes, very very. I think it's one of the biggest cliffs, about a hundred foot on the Cerebolo. Yeah, yes. Beautiful. Yes. Time. Yeah, it's a hundred you can see that you can't believe it. Yeah. Yep. Is there rock crushing going on up there? Or is it just X? I, I think there's there's they there's said there was a crush and there's crushing. There's blasting, yeah. but they weren't they crushing? Or yeah, I believe they are. So yeah. I mean that would be I mean, I can't think of any concerns other than the noise, possibly, or else. And and right down the neighbor. Uh, sure, but yeah. I mean the neighbor's home is is quite a bit further south down the driveway. It's not yeah, it's not right up on it. It's an existing condition. That's correct. That's right. Is is the neighbor a Groton resident or Ledger? Groton. I mean, I mean, there may be people who live in Ledger that I you know that are adjacent to this. Yeah, but the complaint it sends to the like, Ledger zone or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, were those Groton residents? Like, not to my knowledge, no. And is that city water up there, or is that all wells? It's wells. And it flows north. It does. That's hot, right? Some things do. Yes, sound. Yep. It's interesting. Yep. The number of streams that so flow it flows north. north. Is it going to some sort of basin? It, it ends up over at the Thames. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Flat Brook. I've forgotten the name of the yeah. book. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which one of my Flanders? Could you put in mm -hmm. something I was saying from a Groton standpoint? Mm -hmm. Is that um, I don't know exactly how they're going to issue this thing, but it's up to them, of course. But I mean, I like I hate to see an expansion of that anywhere closer to Groton, right? Um, I don't know if that is the type of thing that could... I mean, it, it looks like it's practically up ah, to the line, I know. up to the yeah, right? So it's not like we can limit it mm -hmm. in any way. I mean, it looks like there's a conservation easement um, yeah, that will protect the actual line, and there's a conservation easement along that that water course, a small one. But the whole area is so interesting. It's mm -hmm. a combination of pristine, mm -hmm. yeah. hundred foot things, and then really impacted. What? I mean, essentially, so, that entire. I mean, <clears throat> this is an intensification of the use that's there. Well, it's it's it it's an expansion of it. I mean, they're going to continue, you know, mining the the earth material from from the site. But that's not that clear on that that was ever really done there. That's and that wasn't what. Yeah, I think Slander was saying it right, wasn't right, so, and that and yeah, again, that's a, a ledger it's, issue. <laughs> but right. yeah, no, yeah. no, it's true. But to me, this would be a whole new relook, and you have to get all the neighbors really brought into you know the opine on this. And they talked about a uh, hydrology study, which is one of the things, especially people having problems all the time. Yeah, but now, well. is there a um, the hydrology study is a good thing? Yeah, right. Because of the wells? Yeah, it's like um, the WPCA commissioners, they were neither for right. or against us, yeah. um, or they would like to request a formal review of the hydrology and the effects of blasting and material removal has on local wells. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just support that statement. Send back something that we support that state. Well, I I was going to mention with like bonding that we usually do mm -hmm. in situations, you know, when it might be some damage. Um, how does that work with across town lines? Or I, I mean it's whatever it's whatever condition that Ledger puts on here. If they if they have a requirement for I mean, typically in this case, the bond would really be just for restoration. You know, if they stop, it wouldn't be to to create a new well for someone whose well goes right. goes bad because of the blasting. It, 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 yeah. But you're gonna need a really big bond. Yeah. And <laughs> that's really uh, yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't think. When I mean, you get to the rock and you don't know the risk. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean in this case it's it's really a sediment and erosion control bond, you know, hmm. to restore the site if they stop work. And returning it to some sort it's of to something, right. Yeah. Place that's Recent. Mm -hmm. Well, it said recent activity has included blasting of the ledge, which drew complaints from neighboring mm -hmm. properties because they, I think, for them it was something new, and prompted a review of the file to determine whether the use was actually permitted. Right. <laughs> it's really its impact. Uh, Not the cross. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Because there's a lot of Groton residents that are affected. Yeah. And they, some that we don't even know that they. Well, what, be. what would be the common? So I'd like to see some sort of comment that supports my biology study to be sure. I'd like to see. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'd like to see a study that supports the hydrology approach that the commissioners have stated in order that um, <clears throat> Groton landowners um, don't have an adverse impact on whatever ledger um, decide. That's what I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see really some of the same things we put in with the littles, you know, the hours of operation. We had noise standards. They have I hours of was... they have hours of no, operation. I was saying, yeah. The ones that are talking about are six thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. That to me it would not be acceptable next mm -hmm. to my uh, home. Mm -hmm. They have the glasses. Yeah. What do? So things like that are to me are a little bit they're not what the norm is. It's something we've done a lot of cases. <clears throat> so I think that would be and I think we limited the amount that could be processed. I mean, at Whittles, it's kind of mm -hmm. uh, easier because it's far. And we could say half can come from the site and half could come from off-site be processed and shit that way. But we barely really defined it pretty well. <clears throat> now that we know about the state noise standards, and maybe that's an opportunity. What else did that make? Let's see. Oh, yeah, I said pretty early, 6.30 in the morning. I mean, it sounds a, like hours of operation and the hydrology. I mean, it, it almost it, when they do this special permit, is it like they're starting from scratch and they put those kinds of the, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, we might yeah. just reference to them what we required of the Whittle operation, and that this would hopefully be our expectations, or you know, it'll be the noise too. Maybe just some of the you know. We could reference that. And it, should it all should it, the whole place be allowed to be blasted, or should it be some mix of? I, mean, I believe outside. there's like a limit there to the number of yards that they can raise that from the site. That wills, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is the um? Did you say the access is by a Groton Road? No, it's mm -hmm. not. It's it's from um it's from Route Twelve and Baldwin Hill Road. Okay. But you said it goes by the the resident, the Groton resident. It, it drive the driveway. It, you can see on the map. So the driveway well, is shared, but they, they also there was a statement that they believe there's some sort of relationship, right, between that landowner. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So this is actually a driveway. You can see each of the entrances and exits to the, the excavation site. If you continue to south, you come to um, another house, which is in the town of Groton. This is okay. The property line, yeah. the town line, yeah. and the other, the real problem that I, um, you see on the west side is all those contour lines. Yeah. That's all of the contour lines. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, it's obviously very really steep. On this side, you probably wouldn't see a contour line because it goes up on your feet. So you have a whole wall there, and if you have some sort of big noise, I think you're gonna really. Yeah. I mean, I guess we're... But there's no trees. It's a granite. Cliff, right? Yeah. So you got a hard surface that anything is knocking against. So I'd like to, I, I think, just also to, to clarify so this it's not hard on it, our staff to say we we support the need for hydrology mm -hmm. study, and, and we would also ask that you provide similar guidance or consider the similar guidance that we provide to the we provided to a similar site. An analogous site, which is a little, and just give them it, and just and just yeah, and and consider the limits of the yeah. operation, you know, yeah. to lessen the impact on on residents in the exact area, thing. right? Yeah, maybe yeah. something like okay. that. When yeah. a, when a rotten resident has an issue with something that's going on in Ledger, mm -hmm. do they have any recourse? I mean, other than they can go and complain. Absolutely, to, they can yeah, just like issues. anyone else, and yeah. complain to their zoning official yeah. if it's a zoning issue, or or their mm -hmm. wetland official if it's a wetland. But that's that's why it, well we get notified of this. Yeah, no, I know. I just it's just no, no. I mean that's why I think it's sorry it has to get communication. Um, I just try to imagine how we would handle something if a person from Ledger and then you know was complaining about something just. You know, 
how how uh, how you handle that. You know? It it doesn't really matter where they live. If yeah. it's an issue in Groton, we yeah. would deal with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the way we want to keep it too. No, but yeah. public comment, you yeah. see it, they're not all from Mystic Rock. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, right. It's public. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make the mm -hmm. I mean yeah, we've been through this before, so it seems I mean with the whittles, so right. it seems like something right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great details. Our concerns are yeah. public. Okay. So, or other, that's it for referrals. Report. Hmm? That's right. No other referrals. I hope we won't see you like this. Yes. How do we cannot even get on the agenda? I know. That's what I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Reports. The chair. We did. I attended a uh, committee of chairpersons meeting that we had on August 30th, in which people off site had communication problems they couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we addressed the upcoming town plans for climate action, bicycle and pedestrian plans, plan of conservation and development. Street tree inventory, disposition of excess public property, and heard uh, other commissions. Before. A lot of stuff in the future. Mr. Chair, was that directly in Groton? Groton. Just all Groton. Groton uh, yeah, it's nice. Hmm. Yeah. It was, you know, it's a commission that has had very few meetings. The last meeting was. A year before, which I didn't, I didn't realize, but, but it should try to. It was intended to set up communication between other landers, okay. which I guess we still very done wants us to sit down and talk to the, his commission, so when we can get something on the POCD. Yeah, I, anticip we, I anticipate that to be in, in October, a, a discussion with you all about before we, uh, before, we before we write the RFP. Oh, all yeah. right. Great. Yeah. And then we can send it. We're trying to get input hmm? from other yeah. commissions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Does anyone on the commission have anything to report? Like yeah. it is, oh. I did attend the uh, one of the sessions for Cummings for quite an hour and a half. Can you email I Deb? Did. Excellent. Did Great. I wouldn't okay. have to do it twice. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. And and we keep forwarding you the opportunities just, you know, just in case. Yeah, I I keep, ones on my calendar. I keep forgetting about them. Yep. Put them aside. I'll do it tomorrow. I know. They need to be complete by January. Correct. We need right. to report to the council. Months. That's right. Yep. Yep. Mix of site plan reviews. I can't wait. Actually, that's going to be useful. Mm -hmm. When is that? Sorry? The site plan review. That's the second session. Oh, yeah. and the one we just had. I mean, there's all those good. Okay. So, I don't mm -hmm. have a report of staff. We want to talk about veterans. Oh, so, yeah, sure. Um, so, so yes, we all were made aware of, of her concerns of the material behind the Super 8 motel. Um, so the building official is handling it on, on his end. He does have some building code issues um, with regards to safety and, and sediment and erosion control, and he's dealing with it there. On, on our end, um, the plan that you approved had a phased sediment and erosion control plan. And it laid out a sequence of events. And in this particular location, the sequence that was approved was install the retaining walls and then start on the, on the foundations. So as you can see, um, that order was reversed. Um, so we contacted the owner um, 
first of all, asked him to immediately as in install some additional erosion controls up the slope and then to get his engineer out there to um, actually do a complete um, inspection and make recommendations. Um, I'm also expecting a revised sediment and erosion control plan for this particular sequence to address the fact that there are no walls there at this point, and how are we going to keep that slope stable? Mm -hmm. um, uh, as uh, Tony DeJoya mentioned, there will be con the blocks will be on site tomorrow. The, they will be starting the wall very soon. Um, I, I had some concern. There are other walls on this site, um, particularly uh, against the houses that are on Sengpao. Um, and and I wanted, I told him if you're going to be doing this same, if you're changing the um, the sequence of events over there, frankly, I think that's even more impactful on the number of houses that are there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he indicated as of right now, they are not going to do that. They are going to install walls first before they do buildings um, up above it. Um, so I do expect the revised sediment and erosion control plan soon. We do have a copy of the, the ENS report from the engineer who has certified that it is, the, the measures out there are appropriate. And we will continue to monitor. The, those right. engineers are from there. Those are their reports. That exactly. Report. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. The folks who designed the plan that you that you approved. It is pretty oh. steep. The land. The... It's one to one. It is steep. And yes, it, it looks is. like there. I, I mean, from the photographs. Any... I didn't. I didn't have time to go look, but it looks like there is some like gullying. And... Not anymore. Oh no. No, okay. these were taken quite a while ago. Oh, okay. Um, I was just trying, you know, and you can't tell. No. Yes. I mean, now there's erosion control mat on the slopes okay. as well as um, additional uh, sed fences as you go up, and and some drainage swales to get the water away from the slope. So those were taken probably. What are last the week. things that we could do at this point, this commission? At this point, I think it is just dealing with the sediment and erosion control plan and the sequence. But there's not, I mean, it's not like we. Uh, there's not a, I there's not know, a, I mean, at this point, there's not a cease and desist. Yeah, okay. Like that's what I was sort of, I didn't different. want to say those words. Right. But. I, I don't think that's appropriate here. Um, you know, if this had been in another area of the site where there was potential for actual erosion into the wetlands, the wetland agency would certainly take that kind of, of action because they specifically have the authority to do correction orders and, and cease and desist. Planning and zoning, not so much. It's more of a zoning enforcement yeah, officer okay. going out. Oh, I get it. Right. Saying, you know, you're not compliant with your site plan. Yeah. I mean, this did happen up in Montville, I believe, when they were doing the uh, Home Depot. Yep. The whole, the whole yep. thing collapsed yep. and it made a... You know, yes. Right. Right. Giant uh, disaster. Right. So it's it is a concern, but it's, it sounds to me like there's not a lot that we can do, and that it's going to be remedied. I mean, I think it's being addressed. Um, the owners certainly understand the, you know, the, the concerns of the adjacent property owner, um, and and anybody going out behind the Super Eight would say, yeah, that that were behind my property, I'd be a little concerned too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but nothing has eroded down onto her property at this point, and and again, the erosion controls have really done beefed up. How long will it take them to put the wall? They said maybe two weeks, and it's not one wall; it's two low yeah, it's, walls. Yeah, yeah. Right. staggered. Right. Yeah, Remember that. yeah, they are. They're terrorists. And don't be, it has a diameter. They have to do terrorists. like behind them in lifts. And that's and correct. So yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, that should have been. It seemed to me like that would should be done while you're doing it. You don't want to be digging under. I don't know. <laughs> right. I would think uh, right. I would want to have that in place before I started putting on. And that's traditionally foundation. what I have seen. But yeah. but again, I'm I am not going to direct the co contractor how to build his building. Because as soon as I say right. something wrong, you know what? It's my fault. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm? Yep. <laughs> it would seem like, I mean, you know, you can't no, I compact can't. under the no. foundation. You've got to do it before you do it. It would seem. Yeah. You're going to... well, what do I know? That's what the zone, that's what the building inspector has. It's what the building inspector yeah. has. It's why the contractor has insurance. Exactly. But that, that particular picture looks like. There's a mountain back there. Yeah, like he said he only had six feet. Six yeah. feet to the existing, right, to what yeah, was so there existing was out there. The hill Absolutely. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, the picture is very deceptive. You know, sure. When he said six feet, I was like, oh, well, that looks like about a 20-foot right. hill there. And, right. 
And and when you go out there to look at it, you would assume, I mean, it's all fresh dirt. You could right. easily assume that, oh, that's all brand new fill, you know, and yeah. 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 Well, well, it seems like we support what the staff is doing. I mean, and I think you're also very good in going out in that it can impact other portions of the site um, where we've laid out the plan, particularly where it's more acute to neighborhood houses. That That's a great thing to say, to call them out, right? right. We understand but you need to correct it, which your zoning, mm -hmm. your um, enforcement right. building official has stated. And so, then um, let's move on. Let's make sure you follow the plan. It's pretty simple. Yeah, it mm -hmm. seems like. So they are actually pouring concrete up there. Mm -hmm. That's the, yes, that's yeah. what's happening. That is correct. Now. And like tomorrow. They're finishing tomorrow. Oh, oh. that's all. <laughs> part of They're the not, foundation. Yeah. Part yeah. of the yeah, foundation. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You can see, you can yeah, see no, I can see the forms. forms there. Yeah. And how high? How high is something going on top of that? Um, it is. I've forgotten. I think it's four stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the same It's a skyscraper. Should be a lot taller. Just to know, the Florida um, building that collapsed in Hollywood report if you all hadn't seen it did come out it's very interesting report mm. and they don't blame any erosion underneath that building for the collapse yes. natural erosion oh. what it was built on so very interesting wow this yeah. just came out with that mm. this is the one in miami right? yeah. Mm. yeah where the where did you see the report um it's on the nist site national institute of standards and technology and it was reported out from there, people analyze that report. Mm -hmm. That was just very interesting. What did go wrong, mm -hmm. which was around the pooling, they constructed it incorrectly. Oh, wow. that's what they said. Yeah. Hmm. And did you know NIST did the 9 11 report as well? Mm -hmm. Why that? So, why mm -hmm. it's not been in the news about this? Mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal. Yeah, I didn't see it in the journal. Is he writing articles about Fisher's Island? <laughs> okay anything else so yeah. yeah and we have our quarterly uh newsletter summary anything to note there the asp report and application updates. that's a good summary i think i i think this quarterly newsletter is excellent yeah. mm -hmm. oh it's always interesting quite yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to understand no i mean it's not as clear as it it really brings up some key all points. of the key points yeah. that's what yeah. that's what the objective is right? yeah, so. it's the examples mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. does anyone have anything else I do not i do not so i'll entertain a motion for adjournment so moved it's moved second moved and second I'm in right. favor. That's <laughs> that a unanimous vote yeah. there? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder whether we'll hear more from Brett.